G'day there. You're watching the Aussie Beam Guru. And today I've got a quick presentation I thought would be worth sharing on my channel about um, my favorite Dynamo nodes because I've been building quite a few scripts now for the channel and I thought it's worth noting the ones that are really important to when I build my scripts. So I'm going to do my top 10 um, from 10 to 1. Uh, so my top 10 Dynamo nodes. Uh, so there's so many nodes in Dynamo. Uh, they're all useful in some way. Uh, but these are the ones that I use the most often and they're my favorite nodes as a result. Um, I know it's a bit nerdy having favorite nodes, but I like the program, so of course I'm going to be a little bit biased. Um, so number 10 for me is code blocks and Python script blocks. So that they're really versatile and really useful. Without them, most scripts wouldn't work. Um, but a code block essentially is just a, a, a free text field where you can type in uh, all sorts of rows of data. So you can set up variables, type in text and numbers. And the great thing about it is it lets you really consolidate how you write your scripts. Um, you can sort of write in what we call design script using these. So I use these quite often, um, sometimes even just to avoid using string and number nodes. Uh, and Python scripting likewise can be called on in a node a bit like this, where you can input Python scripting within the node itself. So it saves a lot of space, a lot of time, and it, it makes, a, I guess, Dynamo think a bit, little bit less hard about what it's doing. So definitely worth learning how to use both of those. I do have a video on my channel, um, lesson five of my Learn Dynamo series focuses on code blocks and how you can use them more effectively. Number nine uh, is actually from the Archilab package and this one's the element delete node. There's a lot of nodes that delete in Dynamo, but this is by far the most efficient one that I've found that nearly always will successfully delete anything that you give it. Um, so you can find that just if you have Archilab installed, it's called element.delete. Um, and essentially it's just a big red button. It will really delete almost anything you can give it. So I ran it in this model, for example, just using an all elements in active view and bang, it got rid of everything except the levels pretty much. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty harsh node, um, but I use it in a lot of my scripts where I'm cleaning up. Uh, number eight for me is the multiple input form from data shapes. So you've probably seen some of my tutorials where I cover how to set up user interfaces, but essentially this is the backbone of how it works. Um, so it's the multiple input form plus plus is the shell of the script that builds a user interface. Um, and a lot of other nodes within the package are what build it, such as buttons, for example. But essentially the key is just this node here called inputs. That's where you put all your numbers and buttons and things that you want the interface to show. So essentially the UI comes and intervenes in place of the script. So it actually stops the data flow. So it lets you get more intelligent inputs for your script than say Dynamo Player. Um, so it's really handy and it makes scripts a lot more approachable for people as well. So you can see here that there's one I use here for solar analysis in my office and it's very friendly. So everything has sliders and text fields and drop downs and the user only has to understand this. So really powerful. And I actually have a, a pretty lengthy presentation that I uh, actually presented in, in person to a bunch of people, maybe like 50 to 60, about how to add these user interfaces to Dynamo scripts, but I've uploaded it to my channel also. So feel free to check that out. Number seven for me is um, sort by key and similarly sort by function works in a similar-ish way. So the way that sort by key works is you find it just by looking for by key. Um, and essentially it takes a list and another list and if not, the other list is numerical, it will sort that numerical list for you as a set of keys, but it will also rearrange the other list that you feed into it as the data list itself. So you can see here I've fed in the power level of Superman, Batman and Aquaman and I've set up a corresponding number in another list and I've sorted the power list but then I've also sorted the list of superheroes and obviously if people know me personally they know I'm a huge fan of Batman so Batman definitely comes out on top and of course Aquaman is a power level of one always weak um, so number six for me is string contains or list contains really good when you're hunting down a really small part of data in a data set and you want to find only the things that meet those criteria so basically both of those functions can be found just by looking for contains essentially a string contains it's quite easy. You can see here, I'm just turning a number list into strings here and finding any string that contains the number of two. And essentially it just gives me a list of trues and falses, which I can then move forward on in my script in order to filter that data set down. Really good when you're here dealing with a lot of strings that contain a small element that you're hunting for. Likewise, um, list contains is similar. So here I'm just looking for a list that contains the number 15. And I've got three ranges at the front of my script. And obviously they'll, they'll both contain them at the bottom because one is from one to 20, one's from one to 30. The one from one to 10 doesn't. So I get a list of Booleans that basically say, does my list contain this item? It's good when you're searching for a particular Revit element in a list of elements as well. So it can actually recognize when you're looking at a specific element, not just a number or a piece of text. 
Number five, um, which is actually the, the first thing I learned when I learned Dynamo, is how to get parameters out of elements in Revit and then reset parameters or set parameters in elements as well. Uh, really critical to using Dynamo with Revit. So for me, um, get parameter value is really handy. It's my way of looking at my data um, in a much more intelligent way. So you can see here, I'm just getting all the marks of my doors using the get parameter value by name here. Um, set parameter value by name works the other way around. We take data from Dynamo and push it into elements. So you can see here that we're getting the parameter value of our mark and we're adding door to the front or door dot, and then we're setting that parameter. And essentially it looks a bit more like this next time we do get parameter value by name. So you can really quickly manipulate data very quickly using this. Um, and likewise, you can also find a tutorial in my learning series, lesson six, where I show you how these nodes work in a little bit more detail. Number four, um, which is a really critical one for most people, I think, is importing and exporting Excel data. Um, feel free to check out a package called Bumblebee as well, which is a more advanced version of the default nodes. So essentially, you can find it by looking for Excel. Um, and here you can see an example of me just importing a really big Excel table with more than 800 cells. And it would have done this in less than a second. It reads Excel data so fast, and it basically breaks it up by row. And then you can also transpose that list into by column. So really easy to work with data. But likewise, you can also send data back to Excel files as well, um, which I do quite a lot. So you can get a lot of really good reports and data lists out of Dynamo, and you can get them into other programs such as Power BI. Um, so really powerful and really essential. If we didn't have this in Dynamo, it'd be pretty, pretty hard to work with other software um, with Dynamo. Number three for me is list map. Um, I use this one quite a lot. And uh, basically it just applies the functions to all the sublists or elements within a list. So you can do some things by working at what we call levels in Dynamo, but sometimes you can't. The example here you could do by working at levels, um, other, others you couldn't. So you can see here, for example, I'm trying to add zero to the front of all these sublists of numbers, um, but I can't. I'm, when I try to add it to the front of the list, it just puts it right at the front. It doesn't put it at the front of each sublist. If I come in and intervene with a list map function instead, and I map that function to that list, uh, you can see that it actually will apply it to each sublist of that list instead, which is my desired result. So that's how the list map function works. But you can map a lot more complicated functions, and you can do chains of nodes up to a function as well. So definitely check that one out. Um, really critical to managing large data sets. Number two for me is um, one called logic.if from the Zebra package. Uh, I love using this node. It's it's so critical to how my scripts work a lot of the time. If your scripts have any options in them, you'll need this. So basically, you look for if and you just keep scrolling down. And if you have Zebra installed, you'll find that under logic.if. And it, it basically works the way an if node in Dynamo used to work. Um, but if you use the if node now, uh, it may not work. And I'll show you why. So basically, the way if works, it, it's just if logic from any program. If condition is true, do this. Otherwise, do that. So you might have seen it in programs like Revit or even Excel. Um, essentially, it provides you with that function in a visual scripting environment. So really powerful. Um, so this is the way that the if function works now in Dynamo 2, um, which is obviously pretty rubbish. So you can see that it always works at the shortest list length of the two lists that you're looking at in, from an if perspective. I mean, why on earth would, would we want to work that way? I can't think of a reason why it's there except for just inbuilt limitation. So um, definitely saying no to that one. But instead, if we use logic.if, um, it works exactly as we want to. It just treats them as two sets of data and you get one or the other. So um, that's exactly why I love using the if node because it actually does what if is meant to do. And number one is filter by Boolean mask, uh, my favorite node. Um, I think every time I use it on my channel, I tend to say it's my favorite node. So people probably weren't too surprised that I like this one quite a lot. Um, but essentially you just find it by looking for boo or boolean, um, which is a true or false statement. And you can see that the way it essentially works is you feed in a list of trues and falses, and it will break the list into true and false outcomes if you feed another list, another list in of the same length. So you, usually the way I use it is I get a list, I check for a condition, and I mask based on that condition on the original list, and you can see here it breaks it into the two lists of the true and the false outcomes. So really handy for taking a large set of data and splitting it apart into smaller pieces that you can manage. Say for example, taking all the doors in your project, getting their level and using Boolean mask to get all the doors at level one, for example, um, really quick and a really essential node to list logic. So thanks for watching today. Hopefully this was a, an informative video and it helped some of my users uh, find some new nodes that might help them in how they work and sort of see the ones that I really value in my scripts. 
Um, if, feel free to comment if you agree with the ones I've picked. Um, there's probably a lot of other ones that you like as well. Um, so let me know in the comments which other ones you like using as well. I'll be really interested to see what people rate and value in Dynamo. So thanks for watching today. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. I upload about three times a week, um, probably two to three. Um, so thanks for watching today. Um, and like I said, any comments or feedback, leave it down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.